Welcome back to the Express at High Point. World class, state of the art. Words that are easily being used for this new equestrian facility in South Langley. And also for a new space telescope. One that plans to boldly go where no man or horse has gone before. The Hubble Space Telescope, cutting edge technology, which is still giving us images uh, uh, better than anything else from out in space. But as everything, time marches on and there are new versions and new telescopes that are going out into space and being readied as we speak. Now, the, the latest is uh, something called the James Webb Telescope and Reminder uh, is gonna explain why the James Webb Telescope is a little bit different than the Hubble Space Telescope, takes pictures in a different way, different size, and there's a Canadian connection, so... James Webb Telescope. Well, it's uh, the Hubble is an optical UV infrared telescope. So it sees things the same way that, say, you and I would? And a bit of an extension. Okay. Uh, the James Webb is pretty much an exclusively infrared telescope. Now, infrared is the same thing that operates my TV at home, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, this is a little bit wider, a little bit of a longer range. Um, it's, it's got primarily different science goals. So the main reason is uh, in, this, in our galaxy, there's a lot of gas and dust. In infrared light, you can pierce right through that. Let's see two images. Let's look at a, a Hubble image. We've got one here, a Hubble image, and this is the James Webb version of the same thing. So, so this is the Hubble Deep Field. Okay. It's one of the, the most famous images uh, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And this James Webb uh, Telescope image here, it's a, a simulation. So it's clearly showing thousands and thousands and thousands of more galaxies. That's, that's amazing. I mean, you can really see the difference. I mean, you can still see the outline of where that where that dust is, mm -hmm. and you know it's the same image, but it really does really does look quite a bit different. Yeah. Here's a Hubble Space Telescope image of a nebula, uh, taken in uh, UV and optical light. But uh, when the web takes it, it should see something similar to this. This is an infrared image, and notice how it's able to pierce through the gas and dust, and now you can see the stars being formed, and you can, including, you can see the, uh, the jets that are coming from the central star in this nebula. You can see uh, the, some of the older stars. You can pierce the universe back uh, be well before Hubble could possibly see the things. Okay. Um, the other thing is it's got a neat orbit. It's about a million and a half kilometers away from the Earth. And the reason why it's there is... Uh, uh, it's an infrared telescope, so in infrared light, uh, the, Hubble, the, the telescope itself emits uh, heat, and that will, that's causes a lot of noise and your images aren't very clear. But uh, having it a million and a half kilometers away from the Earth, it's able to block out the sun, the moon, and the Earth all at the same time. And, uh, and on one side of the telescopes, uh, it's, a few, it's about 100 degrees Celsius. On the other side, it's close to uh, absolute zero, about uh, minus 250 degrees. And again, quite a bit bigger. Hubble is about the size of a school bus and the James Webb. The mirror alone is about six and a half meters, meters in length. So, so this is really going to be fantastic. And hopefully might even be able to show us back far enough in time to, to unlock some of those mysteries of the, really how we all got here. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I rode my bike. But I mean, in the bigger scheme of things, how we all, how we all actually got there. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's great information. Uh, for The Express, I'm Cam Cronin here at the Space Center. I'm Reminder Samra. And uh, happy looking up into the stars. If you'd like to win a family pass to the H.R. McMillan Space Center, be the first correct emailer now. Express contest at shaw.ca to name the new telescope that's replacing the old Hubble one. And good luck to you. Now, how about an idea to replace that bad 80s dancing at your next wedding? There's more to planning that party than the big ticket items like the venue and the open bar, including the ongoing trend to incorporate family traditions. Carrots Wedding Bells is brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the Wedding Bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. Sarah's fiance Jody is of Chinese ancestry. And for our wedding, I want to surprise him with her traditional celebratory lion dance. Here we are with Paul Tam. He is the Sifu at the CLF Kung Fu Club. And Sifu is master, father. So half father, half, father, yeah. half teacher. Do people have a lion dance at their wedding? Is that, is that common practice? Actually, it's not just a wedding, anything. Even something like a people pass away and all the stuff, and even give child's birth. So for my wedding, how mm -hmm. many lions could I have? Two. 
Why? Usually it's two because it's representing one is like your husband and your fiance, and one is representing you to bring you luck. So in pairs, usually. I get that they would eat the lettuce. Yeah. Why do they then throw it up? And they split it out to people. It's actually blessing for people. Uh... Amazing. E and I have to pick this up, but I, I don't I don't know what it means. It means that the flower is blossoming and representing bringing you a lot of money. I'm so excited to be marrying a Chinese man. And then it was our turn. We have to take off our heels for this. Okay, which one's harder? The head or the tail? To me, I think the tail is harder. When I heard that, I pulled the bride card. Bend down your leg down a little bit, that's right. I think we should do opposite feet. I two, can't concentrate on my feet. Two. It was one, slow learning at first. Two. I don't want to break the lion. But then we really got going. You ready? Down, jump. And then the head can go up, turn a little bit. Aubrey's gonna shake it. How'd that look? Well, this Sifu sure knew his stuff. Okay, Aubrey. Now it's time to shop for my traditional Chinese wedding dress. Okay, one of the reasons Chinese weddings are awesome is because you get to change. So you can have like four dresses in one night. We started with traditional. So apparently, um, Chinese girls don't have hips. Because it's a little bit tight. I know, it's too loose in here. But there's also the Christmas special. It's not a Christmas special, it's more modern. And next, pink is much more me. And of course, Aubrey had to get in on the action. The collar makes me look like an evil Disney witch. And I look like a blonde Mulan. Okay, let's lift oh this leg, right? oh Although it was pretty obvious our lion dance was gonna take a lot of work. At least I had found the perfect pink Chung Sam. For Shaw TV, where are the wedding bells? Carrots Wedding Bells has been brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. Next week on The Express with the Wedding Bells, it's all about the flowers, from the centerpieces to the bridal bouquet. And still to come on today's show, we've got your something old and something new. After the break, the Empress Hotel in Victoria. We are back into the old part of the hotel. You get that feeling in here right away. I had no idea this place was going to be so massive. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? The High Point Clubhouse in South Langley. The Express, this is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV. Provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. Loungehairstudio.com Welcome back to The Express at High Point Clubhouse in Langley. Now, Scott, I got dinged earlier for not wearing cowboy boots, and now I don't have my exercise gear. Mm -hmm. I had no idea this place was going to be so massive. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, you guys really thought of everything, too. So not only do the horses get a great workout, but so do the people who are part of the clubhouse. That's correct. It's about 8,000 square feet, this whole facility here, between the, the ground level and this level up here. We've tried to make this exercise facility something really, really special, as opposed to something that you find in a typical amenity uh, building for, a, uh, say, a condominium project. We've really tried to make this thing as close to what you'd find in a country club as you could find. I do. It feels fancy. And you're really like, intelligent, too, because you can be here working out and then see everything that's going on downstairs. Well, exactly. So if your child is here doing lessons and taking uh, some riding lessons downstairs, you can be up here, you can exercise and watch them while you're up here as well. Cool, and then you've got the tennis courts, you've got yoga, you've got a sauna. Clearly, not only did I need exercise gear, but maybe my bathing suit as well. Well, I'm not sure about a bathing suit, but yeah, there is individual steam showers for everybody. Yeah, okay, so. fine. They do have social memberships here at High Point that gives you access to the lounge, the tennis courts, and the fitness facility. But remember that the clubhouse is just a drop in the bucket of the 287 acres that include the estates and the equestrian center. Now we're going to move to Miles for our next story. We're hopping a ferry for today's road trip, meeting the grand dame of hotels, who's been watching over Victoria Harbour for over 100 years. 
Travel along with us on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia. When you arrive by horse and carriage on this road trip in BC's capital city, you're in for a real treat. Easy boy. Oh. It's one of Victoria's most prestigious and iconic landmarks. Tally ho. Tally ho. It's been towering over the inner harbour for just over 100 years, all the while complementing the historic and postcard proud parliament buildings across the way. The Fairmont Empress, a 477 room hotel complex, which has grown over the years to take up an entire city block. International royalty, Hollywood movie stars and well-known public figures have all been entertained here. Yes, bring the rolls round the front. Thank you. And when you make your high-profile visit, the hotel offers interpretive tours, which will guide you through its history. Between 1904 and 1908, the Empress was built by the Canadian Pacific Railroad as a hotel stop for travellers. It's built on what used to be called James Bay, filled in mud flats which had gathered waste and garbage. Old photographs around the hotel show its evolution from its original Edwardian chateau style section to the additions in 1909, 1914 and 1928 respectively. English architect Francis Rattenbury was its designer, incidentally the same guy who designed the Parliament buildings. The Empress is rather pleasing to the eye from the outside, but what about behind the scenes? This working hotel has a reputation for being the creme de la creme, so there's sure to be some undiscovered nooks and crannies. This is known as the Empress Dining Room. And this, we are back into the old part of the hotel. You get that feeling in here right away, especially the notice the ceiling. You always have to look up. This ceiling is quite unique. You'd see this in a lot of British stately homes, but it's actually all made of plaster. And then it was all hand carved and painted over to look like mahogany. So that is plaster. It is not wood. A lot of people get it mixed up. Then there's the tea lobby serving tea and cakes every afternoon. And the china is real Royal Dalton from England with authentic silverware alongside. Oh, this is all about presence and conversation in this room. And this is where, especially on a Sunday afternoon, you'd have ladies in here, you know, gossiping about their week's event. And sometimes they would hide themselves behind the teacup so they could gossip and nobody would know what they were talking about. The hotel was actually rescued from demolition in 1965 after a huge public outcry and $4 million was raised to upgrade the Empress. That would take it into the 1980s, at which point the entire hotel went through what was called a royal restoration. Parts of the hotel were restored to their original condition and that's when the Victoria Conference Center was added. The Canadian Pacific spent $45 million renovating. Notice the stained glass window in here. This is actually a copy of the original. Um, it's actually 25 planes of glass and it was designed in Vancouver. Um, it's sometimes known as the Whispering Gallery, but it's actually known as the Palm Court. And if you look up, you can hear the echo of your voice. Can you hear Hello. it? Hello. 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 Tea time. <laughs> I should think so. <laughs> Perhaps Victoria's most expensive hotel room, $2,500 a night for the Vice Regal Suite. Stephen Harper, Ozzy Osbourne, they recently stayed here. Royalty has used it as a hospitality suite, but they usually stay at Government House. And now we are in the Crystal Ballroom, which is where many members of higher society would have had a luncheon laid out for them, including the great man himself, Sir Winston Churchill, who in 1929 would have had his fingers into a pretty healthy buffet. And I've been told that they put whiskey in his teapot. Shall we dance? dance? But also, in 2002, we also had the Queen here. She was celebrating her Diamond Jubilee, and there was a huge luncheon in here for her. Queen Elizabeth? Oh, yes, she was Queen. <laughs> Reporting in Victoria for the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip, I'm James Green. Entertaining and informative, the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. There are so many amazing places to visit around BC. Next week with Road Trip, we're going to take you to Kamloops to visit one of their most popular spots. But right now, we're shining our spotlight on events a little closer to home.
You can take steps to end global poverty at the 27th Annual World Partnership Walk. It's a family and dog-friendly 5K walk, with 100% of the funds raised going directly to international development programs. This is a signature event in Western Canada's fashion industry. 20 models are selected to work with the industry's top professionals in six weeks of intensive training, photo shoots, workshops, and a spectacular glamour finale show. Get an opportunity to speed date with film experts like writers, directors, producers, or entertainment lawyers and ask them everything you want in just three minutes. Afterwards, you can mix and mingle with other independent filmmakers. A reminder, too, that here at High Point Equestrian Centre in South Langley, they're having an open house on May 14th from 12 till 4. Now that's it for today's Express. We're going to leave you with a visual tour of the Bill Reed Gallery in Vancouver, and we'll see you next time.